Within the human brain is located a small endocrine gland which governs the functioning of all other endocrine glands in the body. This master endocrine gland is the pituitary gland or hypophysis. It is called the master endocrine gland as it governs the activity of all other endocrine glands in the body. These endocrine glands release chemical messengers or hormones that are released directly into the bloodstream. The pituitary gland is almost the size of a pea and its approximate weight is 0.5 gram. It is located in a depression of the sphenoid bone called the cella turchica. The pituitary is attached to the hypothalamus by a stalk called the infundibulum. The pituitary gland consists of two components, the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary, also known as the adenohypophysis, is further divided into two regions, pars distalis and pars intermedia. However, in humans, the pars distalis is almost fused with the pars intermedia. The posterior pituitary is also known as the neurohypophysis. It consists of one lobe, the pars nervosa. Different regions of the pituitary gland produce different hormones. The pars distalis portion of the anterior pituitary secretes six hormones. Let's look at each hormone and its function. The growth hormone, GH, secreted from the pars distalis of the anterior pituitary is responsible for the overall growth of the body in growing children. The most peculiar effect of growth hormone is an increase in height. The growth hormone is an anabolic hormone. It stimulates the growth of bones and muscles. It increases the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats in the body. It also stimulates the body's immune system. Another hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary is the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH or thyrotropin. This hormone stimulates the release of T3 and T4 hormones from the thyroid gland. Another hormone is prolactin. This hormone induces milk secretion in the mammary glands of pregnant women. After childbirth, prolactin exerts its effect on the mammary glands and maintains the production of milk for lactation. Did you know that prolactin which induces milk secretion in the mammary glands, is also present in men. However, its role in men is not clearly understood. Scientists have observed a direct relation between increasing prolactin levels and infertility in men. Another hormone of the anterior pituitary is adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, or corticotropin. ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland to synthesize glucocorticoids. Two other hormones of the anterior pituitary are FSH and LH. FSH stands for follicle-stimulating hormone and LH stands for luteinizing hormone. Together, they are called gonadotropins, as they act on the gonads of males and females. In females, follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, stimulates the growth of ovarian follicles. It also induces production of the female sex hormone, estrogen, in the ovaries. In men, FSH stimulates the maturation of seminiferous tubules in the testes and maintains spermatogenesis, leading to the production of sperm. Let's move on to the other gonadotropin hormone, the luteinizing hormone, LH. In females, a mid-cycle surge of luteinizing hormone, LH, causes ovulation. LH promotes the production of progesterone after ovulation and thus prepares the female body for implantation. In men, LH is responsible for the production of the hormone testosterone by the Leydig cells of the testis. Now, let's look at hormones produced by the pars intermedia of the anterior pituitary. The pars intermedia produces only one hormone, the melanocyte-stimulating hormone, 
MSH. This hormone stimulates the release of the skin pigment, melanin. The posterior pituitary stores and secretes two hormones, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, ADH, also called vasopressin. However, these hormones are not produced in the posterior pituitary. They are produced by the neurosecretory cells of the hypothalamus, which have axon terminals located in the posterior pituitary. These hormones, thus made by the cells of the hypothalamus, are stored and secreted by the posterior pituitary. The word oxytocin is from the ancient Greek word oxytokia, meaning sudden birth. Oxytocin induces contraction of the smooth muscles of the uterus in pregnant women, thus causing labor pains during childbirth. Did you know that artificially synthesized oxytocin is used by doctors to induce labor in pregnant women? Synthetic oxytocin is administered under the trade names Phytocin or Syntocinon. After childbirth, oxytocin causes milk ejection when the baby suckles at the mother's breast. The action of oxytocin is, however, different from that of the anterior pituitary hormone, prolactin. While prolactin stimulates milk production in the mammary gland, oxytocin helps in the release of milk in response to breast stimulation. Another hormone of the posterior pituitary is the antidiuretic hormone ADH or vasopressin. An antidiuretic agent is a substance that retains water in the body and decreases the amount of urine formed. Similarly, the antidiuretic hormone ADH or vasopressin acts mainly on the distal and collecting tubules of the kidney and increases the reabsorption of water into the body. It thus leads to a reduction in the formation of urine. It is by virtue of the antidiuretic hormone ADH that a normal individual secretes only 1 to 2 liters of urine in a day. Any damage to the pituitary gland causes two types of imbalances in the level of hormones secreted by the pituitary gland. The hormonal levels either decrease, which is known as hyposecretion, or they tend to increase, hypersecretion. Let's look at the clinical conditions caused by increased or decreased secretion of the pituitary hormone. Reduced secretion of growth hormone in a growing child causes dwarfism. The person exhibits stunted growth. Increased secretion of growth hormone in a growing child causes gigantism. Gigantism is characterized by excessive height and growth. When the growth hormone level increases in an adult, it leads to a condition called acromegaly. In acromegaly, there is disproportionate enlargement of the face, jaw, lips, ears and hen. Reduced secretion of antidiuretic hormone ADH or vasopressin causes a clinical condition called diabetes insipidus. In this disorder, a person may pass 15 to 20 litres of urine in a day.